is that since pianists are always playing music from the past, uh, that the pianos of the past uh, might shed some light, especially on what the composers were up to. The concept that I had for time travel was that the pianists, of course, are learning their music on a modern piano. The ability to be able to examine harpsichords, clavichords, uh, also mid-19th century pianos, uh, and to be able to compare them to the modern piano, um, I believe is unique to Oberlin. When my students take time travel for pianists course, which I encourage them to do, uh, they really come back with a new uh, sensitivity to tone production. they'll come to the class having prepared themselves to play on the modern piano. So the first thing we do is have them play the way they had prepared. The modern piano is a great instrument. It's my instrument. In general, tones tend to last a very long time. If you look at the historical development of pianos, the main line that has been followed is a larger sound, and this is mostly achieved by having greater string tension and bigger hammers. The older instruments, by contrast, have a very sharp attack, so they speak very clearly, and then the sound dies away relatively quickly, and that's what makes an enormous difference musically. First of all, the tone decays much more quickly, so you're able to create a lot of surprises. Then we move to the appropriate historical instrument and I guide them through some experiments, different pedaling, different voicings and so on to give them some different sounds. If you want it to sound like suddenly the concert is interrupted by bombs outside, that's one possibility. <laughs> The reaction I love to get is they say, oh, now I understand what the composer was doing, what, what those dots on the page were after. And then comes the interesting moment when we go back to the modern panel and say, okay, now you have some new ideas and some new sounds. Uh, what does that inspire you to do now? This class will help me like to improve my style as a pianist because like I know like how the music was played like, when it was composed I mean, in the past. Well, I decided to take time travel because I figured that it would be really useful to better understand the pieces I'm playing. I mean, in my mind, this is how I think of it is that, oh, like this is the sound that Mozart heard in his head when he wanted to express this like the angst. <laughs> the, the better idea we have of what the composers had in mind the, um, the better position we're in to make uh, creative choices of our own. Uh, the students will, I think, grow also culturally. That composers, when they wrote, a lot of the compositional process is actually influenced by the kinds of sounds that are available to them. And students really become much more aware of this. I guess one of the more important things I've learned through this class is to accept different opinions because people will s prefer different things. So you just want to always be welcome to new ideas, new sounds. I learned like, how to think more like being a conductor rather than a pianist. To know like, when I play, like what kind of sound do I want? Like what instrument do I want? It? to display. In some ways for me the music is, is related to the, the art during the time and just to hear the different sounds coming from these instruments allows me to paint a more vivid picture in my mind of how like everything evolved. What I hope that I'm accomplishing with them is showing them that they can make their own relationship with this music, that they can go straight to the source, they look at the scores, they can hear the sounds that the composer had in mind, and they can really find their own voice.